for his goodness and his mercy toward us. We offer praise. Now, I'm going to make it personal. For his goodness and his mercy toward me, I, now can I get a witness? If I can get a witness, then it's us. For your goodness, Lord, and your mercy toward me, I'm going to give you praise. Can I get a witness? Then it is toward us then. He is worthy of our praise. And I thank God for his goodness and his mercy that he offers toward us. Because I know if he's been good to me, he's also been good to you. Am I right about it? Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come humbly before your presence. In the name of Jesus, we come just as an empty pitcher before a filled fountain. Lord, help me to decrease that you might increase. Have your way. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. This is a new month, and this month we're going to be studying and preaching on faith. On faith. That's our topic all month long. All last month we talked about love, we preached about love, and we encouraged you to love everybody. You heard it enough, now it's up to you to love everybody because God is love. And without love, you're not going to heaven. So you better love everybody if you want to go to heaven. Now this month we're talking about faith. And Hebrews 11 and 6 says, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So faith must be very important because Hebrews gospel said that without it, it is impossible to please God. How many of you really want to please God? Then you better get some faith. It doesn't require a whole lot of faith, but you need at least mustard seed faith. I want to please God, and I want my faith to be bigger than mustard seed. At least let it be as big as a llama bean. I want some good faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. I want to please him. Faith is so important. So what is this thing called faith? Faith is an allegiance. It is a belief and trust in God. It is confidence. You know the scripture where you memorize it in Hebrews. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It's what you must have in order to please God. God wants to have a relationship with every person that he has created. He desires for his children to come in search of him and to find him. The best way to draw close to God and to have him to draw close to you is to get into the word, study. Then you will discover what he wants to reveal to you through that word. 
Because faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Not only should we study the word, read the word, hear the word by faith. We need to live the word. The word is good news. And with all the bad news that we're getting today, it should be refreshing to get some good news. How many of you heard a whole lot of bad news this week? If you haven't, you haven't been listening. Bad news, bad weather, bad reports, illnesses, deaths, all the bad news. But the word is some good news. So you should have gotten in the word some this week because faith's coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more word that you get, the more faith that you get. Lots of word, lots of faith. Little word, little faith. No word, no word. God wants us to walk by faith. And the good news is that every person who seeks the Lord with a sincere heart will find him. This is what he promised in his word. And every person who by faith finds God will receive eternal life. That's amazing. If you find God, you will also receive eternal life with God. My faith is in God. Now, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Faith can sometimes be called risk because from the way we see the situation, there appears to be no way out. We did all we could to change the situation, and nothing has changed. But when you take the risk and try it God's way, some way, somehow, the situation is resolved. Am I right about it? Faith looks at the situation through God's eye, not through our limited understanding. Faith is trusting God through the situation and it does not allow us to panic about the outcome, but leave the outcome to God. When you panic, you become fearful. And faith and fear do not coexist. Either you have faith or you have fear. You can't have both at the same time. So I suggest to you to choose faith. Faith in God will make you fully persuaded that God is able to do just what he said he would do. In fact, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. That's the good news. If you can ask it or think it, God can do more than that. And he can do it according to your faith. Let this be done unto you according to your according to your faith. Those things that seem to be impossibility for you are mere opportunities for God to show up and to show out. Anybody ever had an experience of faith that results in the things that happened that you thought that would never happen? When God honors your faith, your faith should make you faithful to God. Can I say that again? When God honors your faith, then your faith should make you faithful to God. My faith causes me to do all that I can for his purpose, for his glory, for his honor. I want to please God because he's so faithful to me. Where is your faith? Did I not say that sometimes faith calls us to take risk? 
We have faith without thinking about it. We have faith in things, in people. How many of you have been across the Bay Bridge? How many of you in here have been across the Bay Bridge? Only a few people panic when they go across the Bay Bridge. Many of us go across the bridge and don't even give it a second thought. We trust that the construction has been done well, and we have faith in the design that it was correct and that they built the bridge correctly. So we have faith to travel from the eastern shore to the western shore safely. We believe that it's just going to happen. But we don't have faith enough to believe that God is a bridge over our troubled water. Yet God made the earth and everything that is in it. Where is your faith? We have faith that the wheels of our vehicle will take us where we need to go. But we can't trust God because he's a wheel in the middle of the wheel, according to Ezekiel 1. We go to the doctors and have faith that they will give us the right prescription. But one woman just touched the hem of his garment and was healed. Faith can move mountains, yet we are still climbing up the mountain. Where is your faith? When we move in faith, we can see God working miraculously on our behalf. All we need, I said earlier, is mustard seed faith. So you shouldn't climb the mountain. You should have faith enough to move the mountain. Faith takes you where you could not go without it. Faith took Peter for a walk on the water. Faith took the heat out of the flame of the fiery furnace. Faith made the lions a pillow for Daniel to rest his head. Faith gave Abraham and Sarah a son when they were too old to have children. Faith caused the walls of Jericho to fall down. Faith parted the Red Sea for the children of Israel. Where is your faith? What has your faith done for you? You've got to put your faith into action. Because faith without works is dead. I am saved by grace through faith. Because I believe what the word said. And it says, if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, I would be saved. So, by faith, I am saved. Where is your faith? How much do you trust God? Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 tells us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. I tell you all the time, I'm going to trust in the Lord until I die. I'm holding on, and I won't let go of my faith. Faith woke me up this morning. Faith started me on my way. Faith gets me through my bad situations because I trust that God is able to do anything but fail. I'm learning to put it all in God's hand because with God, that which seems impossible for me is always possible for God. God can do anything but fail. From time to time, we just look back and wonder how we made it over. Anybody got a situation that you look back and wonder how you, anybody, 
how you made it through. I encourage you to live in faith and the faith of God, to walk by faith. Have the expectation that God is not through with you and blessing you. Though the vision tarry, wait for it. It will not lie. Your day will come. Where is your faith? Faith is simply believing without sin. Faith, again, is the substance of things and the evidence of things. Where is your faith? My faith is in God. Would everyone stand at this time? Let us pray. Eternal God, we just thank you because you are God. Besides you, there is none other. We thank you, Lord, because you are able to do anything but fail. Increase our faith that we might trust you every step of the way because you're trustworthy and careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. You had faith enough to sit back in that pew and believe that it was going to hold you. You had no doubt in your mind that that pew was going to hold you. You had faith in that thing. It could have broken. It could have fallen apart. But you didn't even look. You just turned around and sat down. Now, if you can have faith that that pew or that chair can hold you, why not have faith that God can hold you and meet all the needs that you might have? Put your faith into action, and God bless you. Is there anyone who has a need for special prayer at this time? The altar's open. Anybody? Anyone else need prayer?
Where is your faith? Where is your faith? I thank God for what he's doing. For I see the Lord doing great things. And I challenge you again this week. Like I've done for the past two weeks. Live each day this week. Just like it's your last day on earth. I challenge you to live each day this week like it's your very last. Because you don't know. I don't know. Old statistics show that 7,700 people die every day in this world. 7,700 people die every day. And I don't know which day might be my day. You don't know which day might be your day. So live each day this week just like it's your last. Because today it will be 7,700 people's last day. I saw on Facebook where a friend of ours, Sister Sharon Taylor, She's been on our prayer line many times, singing for us on our prayer line. She said her husband went to work that morning. Not sick or anything. Just went to work and died before the day was over. Says she never, ever thought or could fathom the fact that that would be their last conversation. And what would she have felt like if she had left and, and they had left angry with each other? That would be something that she would have to live with. So make it right with everybody so that you might be ready when it's your time to go. You hear me? That's important. Don't take this life that the Lord has given you lightly and for granted. I'll, I'll get it straight tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promised to neither one of us. Get it right today. If there is something that needs to be corrected, get it corrected. Do all that you can to make life prepared for you to leave here. God bless you. God bless you. Live all this week, every day that you wake up, say, Lord, let me live this day like it's my last. I found myself doing a lot more. When I start to challenge you all with that, I found myself doing a lot more than I had been doing before I put forth the challenge. Anybody else made a few changes, one change? Anybody besides me?
and he ate and was eating and just felt like he might have been so rejoiceful, so happy to have that sandwich. And I turned around and I watched him walk with that sandwich, eating and just enjoying that, that meal, that meal. And then later on that day, a young lady by the name of Michelle saw us walking near the mall. And she came up to us, and she was somewhat unkept. But she came up to us and she said, could you all give me a, and before we knew it, we were handing her some money because she, she looked like she might have been hungry and needed something. But she said, could you all just hand me a word of prayer? She asked for prayer. And, and so we, we circled this young lady with my daughter and Bishop Cheryl Smith and myself, and, and we circled her and my niece, Sissy, and we prayed for that young lady. And she just was so grateful for just prayer. And then we said, have you had anything to eat? She said, I wanted prayer. I, I wanted prayer. But we still offered her some funds for whatever she might have wanted at that time. And I say that to say this. We talked about love the other month. Love and share. Because it, it could have been me. It could have been you. It could have been my child. It could have been your child. And so I, I, I've learned even from that experience. I've, I've been a giver, selfish, unselfish giver. And I, I just kept that in my spirit the whole week. And then I called Bishop, and I talked with Bishop on yesterday, or he called. And I told Bishop the prayer that that young lady, Sister Jaquetta, prayed on Thursday night. That prayer has stayed in my heart. It has moved my spirit. So what? Because I'm a pastor. So what? Because I've been to seminary. We fall by the wayside. No man is perfect. And we all can use a little bit of Jesus. We all can use a little bit of Jesus. So I just want to say, hold on. Love one another as Christ have loved the church, because we never know, as Bishop said, from day to day. Charles' aunt had passed on June the 5th. Her classmate, one of her friends, had called to console the family and even talk to her. And three weeks later, she was gone. Miss Betty Emery, and they put her away on yesterday. So we just don't know, but again, Love ye yet one another as Christ have loved the church. And know that we don't have it all unless we have Christ Jesus. God bless you, new life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank God. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. God bless you. We're ready for our Lord's Supper.